I did. Um, so uh, uh, today, uh, it was a good news. Um, you know, I, I, I think the good news is that uh, I didn't drink uh, both bottles during uh, a span of an hour or during the same football game. Um, I kind of spaced it out. I kind of had uh, this bottle of Merlot during the uh, Seahawks uh, 49ers game. Um, so, yeah, um, my goal was to just only go through this bottle today. Um, I, I, I do love Moscato. It's a nice, uh, sweet drink. Um, I did go through this during the second game. Um, I went through both bottles during, uh, today. The goal was just for one bottle. I didn't drink both in a span of an hour or during one game. So both are kind of spaced out during six hours. Um, so I, um, the end result here is uh, for me to control my drinking is to drink uh, for two days out of seven during the week. Uh, to drink only during the weekends. Obviously, when you have something like NFL playoff week, you want to abstain from drinking during one of the two days during the weekend. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Sunday off from drinking. So when I'm uh, available for the second half of the Giants-Vikings uh, game, uh, you won't see me with alcoholic beverage. Uh, you'll see me abstaining from alcoholic beverages during uh, during Sunday. I'm, I'm going to boycott the Dolphins-Bills game because that's not much of a game. Um, not much of a game between the Dolphins and the Bills. So, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Um, I don't, I can't believe how that game ended. I mean, the Jags won. It was crazy. Um, I'm going to take my next week on Monday. Uh, and take... Uh, because, yep, yeah, Saturday, Sunday. So, you don't want to do it for three straight days. So, Sunday, I'm going to abstain from alcohol. Monday, I'm going to get a drink again. Uh... As uh, as uh, you see here, I'm uh, I've got running gear. Well, I don't have uh, I don't have running shorts on right now. I don't have running shorts. Um, I need to find my other pair of running shorts. But uh, you know, I'll start the run. I could run like four miles, pretty much. In my prime, I could do like six to ten miles, pretty much. I can't do a marathon or anything like that, but. Pretty much when soccer, when football started in uh, September, I, I kind of I stopped running for three months, so I gotta get back in the shape. I was 155 pounds. I'm 172 pounds. Uh, I kind of have a stomach right now. Uh, I kind of gotta have to have to get rid of that. Uh, World Cup drinking and uh, holiday drinking all together. What can go wrong, right? So the World Cup is over. The holidays is over, and now. I can get back to focusing on my health, uh, to not have, uh, because m much of the fat that accumulates when you drink too much comes from the inside of your organs, and that part you can't really see too much, but that's when you start to develop a gut, and, and that's what you want to try to, that's what you want to try to get rid of. Uh, I do put olive oil on my skin every night because it keeps your skin looking young and fresh, and you look 10 years younger, so uh, there's that, but also... Uh, drinking lots of water, all of that, not drinking alcohol every day. That's what makes you keep me looking young and fresh, too. Um, I'm 27, uh, too, by the way. Uh, the, uh, really, uh, uh, what made me do this is, uh, yes, picking up 17 pounds from 155 to 172. I mean, I'm 5'10", uh, 172, all of that. I, could, uh, I, I can definitely... Uh, that's not a problem. It's just not running in three months and all of that and combined with World Cup binge drinking, yep, that's off. But I want to have a healthy lifestyle. You don't want to have health problems that linger from alcohol, organ failure, uh, too much fat accumulating, accumulating on the inside of your organs to really develop a gut. Uh, I did have, uh, I had a really uh, sore stomach I uh, got citrus, you felt a little heartburn, um, yeah, you lost your appetite, 
your stomach hurt so much, you felt full, all that. It's a, it's a, I, I, I know my, my sore stomach that I had for like five days, that minor case of gastritis, gastritis, whatever you call it, was, was caused due to roll cup binge drinking. So I, I'm on a, a program here where I only limit myself to acid reflex. Yep, acid reflex. It's the first time I've got it. It was only four days. Milkshakes, wort, drinking, shots of olive oil wort. Uh, that's another thing, too, is that, um, you know, uh, taking shots of olive oil, too, helps detoxify the liver, too. It helps clear out the liver. Olive oil is good for the skin. It's good for you know, helping uh, helping your stomach. It's uh, They've done scientific studies. It helps against gut citrus and acid reflux. Uh, it's good for your skin. It's good against fighting uh, skin radicals. Good against cancer. Uh, taking shots of olive oil when you're detoxing from alcohol. Uh, this will help you detox your liver. Taking a tablespoon shot of, of olive oil per day will help you to detox your liver. So it's not only limiting your drinking, but also it's about detoxing and cleaning the liver. And good call on green tea as well. Uh, scientific studies have also shown that cardiovascular activity or just really any kind of exercise if it's running, if it's uh, weightlifting, that will also help you get rid of. Uh, it starts with the V. It's a kind of fat, not the not the kind of fat that accumulates on the sides or in your midsection. Uh, it's the kind of fat that accumulates unseen fat inside uh, in your organs. So here's me uh, right now. You know. This could definitely be a lot better. It can be a lot better. And uh, that's the result of binge drinking from the World Cup, you know. Uh, you know, for three months, you know, just constantly pass that on your bed. And when you start to exercise, when you start to weight lift, when you start to run cardio, when you can do this for an hour, that's what gets rid of it. But also limiting your amount of units consumption per week it's going to help also with not having too much alcohol consumed in a given week. So that's the goal. That's the goal. I can weigh like a, I, I can weigh like a soccer player. You know, I can be under 60 pounds or whatever I want to. I can be really scrawny. But extra calories, it's empty calories. Alcohol is empty calories. When you binge drink a lot, that can be up to 600, up to 1,000 calories. Uh, that's the goal here. Uh, everyone goes through, uh, uh, people go through a drinking problem right now. I mean, I'm at a healthy weight. I don't eat high fructose corn syrup. I try to avoid sugar. I don't drink sugar in my coffee, but uh, I do have a drinking problem. I've got a wine alcoholic. I'm a wine alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't drink any kind of alcohol. I'm mostly. It's just a line. So I'm a wine all up. I'm going to try to avoid that. I'm going to go out for a run right now. It's, I know it's kind of cold. It sucks. It's midnight. It's Arizona. It's not that cold out, outside right now. But exercise, not drinking every day. Uh, hopefully go through half a bottle on uh, on Monday. Or no, just, 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 just not going going based off of the bottle. Just uh, what they say for a guy. Should be uh, two drinks a day. So if it's two uh, cans of beer, if it's uh, two glasses of wine, that's the amount that you should be uh, you should be consuming. I think I did a good job today during the Seahawks Niners game by really spacing out my drinks. I uh, did not go to the bottle of Moscato immediately. Um, had it at the start of the Jags Chargers game. Oh, this is what I'm gonna do. I'll make the best of it. Uh, you know, for me to upload videos, all of that, I have to be in good health, especially when you reach that age. But I'm 27 right now, it's all good. 
Okay, watch out. I am. I'm going to go for a run. I said New Year's resolution for me is uh, limit the limit the space out the drinks. And, you know, we good, you know. Be in good health. I, uh, 172 pounds right now. Yep, 172. If I put 10, whatever. That's close to being borderline overweight. Close to. But, I'm not obese. None of that. You can be completely skinny and have the kind of a bad fat accumulating inside your organs if you eat the wrong foods, if you drink alcohol too much. Uh, I think, I, you know, I, I've i been a, a very serious drinker uh, for over a year and a half. This is not like it's going on for 10 years or anything. You know, I, you know, I've, I haven't drank in for quite some time, you know, uh, ever since college and all that. But a year and a half, a year and three quarters, it's not five years, it's not ten years. Uh, i got to handle that very seriously. Uh, this, uh, this stomach pain, uh, is definitely something I, I never want to ever feel ever again. Yes, water keeps the skin looking, looking fresh. I'm going to drink some water because I know I'm dehydrated right now because of all of my drinking during the football games today. I'm going to get hydrated. I'm going to go for a run and I do have, uh, uh, zero calories Gatorade so I can avoid excess sugar and all that. So... I'm going to be going for a run right now. And, uh, well, I mean, I, 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 I don't drink high fructose corn syrup. I mean, uh, the, the only time I ever get soda is if I, I get some back from my mom, you know, like coming back from the holidays or whatever. I'll, I'll never, ever buy a soda from the store. I'll never, ever do that. The only time I can drink a soda is if uh, my mom uh, gives some back for me, you know, over, uh, you know, over Christmas, which is the only reason why I even have Cokes in my fridge is because of that. But I really, really drink, I really, I really drink soda. Because I can drink water like it's soda. I drink water like it's soda. So, yep, I'm going to go for a run right now. That's what I want to do. Um, you won't see me uh, having wine every single uh, live stream, you know. Uh, it will only be on the weekends. Um, I'm serious about this. Uh, kind of tempting to just relax and not go on the run, whatever. But I'm going to do it. Running helps you keep you uh, a good weight. It helps you detoxify. Olive oil is great when you have acid reflux, when you have a sore stomach. It's great when you want to take a break and detox and clean the liver, all of that. Like, uh, like, uh, well, like you said, green tea is also good for that, too. I don't really drink green tea, but I probably should. But I think I'm good with the olive oil that I have in my cabinet uh, to detox from what I've drank during the weekend. But your liver should break down all of the alcohol if you drink moderately. But if you binge drink, yeah. If you drink more than two units a day, then yeah, that's when you have to you have to clean your liver. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna have a uh, a glass of uh, a bottle of Gatorade Zero, whatever, before I go for a run. And I need to do better. I I, I improved my mileage yesterday, building up the cardiovascular system. I like to go buy a weight set eventually. Have it here, so you're not paying for a gym membership every month. You can wipe down your own equipment here. Uh, multiple people use equipment during the course of an hour when they wipe down the equipment. So um, I want to have my own gym equipment here at my apartment. And going to go for a run in this uh, this cold weather. And, uh, yeah, good call, man, on the gluten, you know, uh, and this sort of all that. Yeah, I, I, I don't really like pork, by the way. When I have meat, it's, it's, uh, it's chicken, whatever, fish, all that, you know, salmon, whatever, chicken, a steak. I really don't have pork there, so that's good, though, but, uh, this, thank you, damn big guy. This helps. This helps.
um, kind of do it all, all, all by myself. But I just want to let you know that I'm definitely concerned, and uh, I've, I've only been doing it, uh, drinking this much for a year and a half. But I'm confident, confident I'll make the changes. I didn't. I spaced out the drinking of the bottles today. Uh, I wanted to only drink one. I had two. I had two bottles today, but it's a process. We'll get through it. And uh, I, I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I will not have a bottle. I will not have a drink tomorrow. And 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 here's what is left. Okay, I got Cabernet here. I can decide if I want to drink the. I uh, uh, have a half a bottle, whatever. I'll not. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't go th based off of the bottle. Two, two, two units. I've got a Neuer. I have a Cabernet, and I have a bottle of Lambrusco in my fridge. But uh, taking Monday, uh, taking Sunday off, taking Tuesday, Wednesday, first Thursday, Friday off. Exercise in between that time to toxify and uh, I'll be back to where I want to be, you know, 155 pounds or whatever. I say I'm, 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 I'm kind of small for a guy, whatever. But if you start to uh, weight train, whatever, then you can have 170 pounds of muscle instead of just 170 pounds of uh, of some fat hanging around. So uh, that's the goal, and also to prevent. Uh, future health problems that may arise from too much alcohol consumption. Uh, it's not something that happens overnight. I'm a, I'm a wine hawk. I love wine. Hey, uh, you know, sh uh, sugar is short-term carbohydrates. They burn quickly. They don't last in a hungry. Uh, they don't last long like complex carbs. So these simple sugars are always craving for more. And that's no different than other foods out there. Well, it's not really high fructose corn syrup. It's just simple carbohydrates. Simple carbohydrates are the sugars from the alcohol that cause you to crave to crave more, because that those carbohydrates are being uh, converted or being burned out very quickly. So uh, that's what I'm going to go do right here. Uh, I'm under a huge uh, wine control program. I'm going to limit it to the weekends. And if I do that, then there's not going to be a problem at all. There's not going to be a problem at all. And if you're wondering, this has been only been going on for a year and a half. For a year and a half. Yep. And uh, the legendary wine glass that I broke when Goking the Bond failed to win back to back after he lost the Phoenix Suns, uh, that is the uh, it's either between that or the broken wine glass when the loser Phoenix Suns lost to the fuck ass Dallas Mavericks in game seven. Those are the two most legendary moments right broke a wine glass on a live stream. And yes, I will break another one if the Niners win the Civil War because they ain't got no chance. It's going to be between the Niners and I, but between the Niners, it's going to be between the Eagles or the Bucks in this conference. That's how it's going to go be. So, yep. Uh, channel getting eliminated is fair game. The Niners ain't got no chance because they don't let the Vision Rivals win at Rival Stadiums. How did it work out for the Chargers? How did it work out for the Raiders last year? Because, you know, all the Rams, you know, that's, that, that's still a rival. You know, that's still a rival. And... I can't remember a rival team winning a Super Bowl at a rival team stadium. I mean, the NFL just don't want that happen. I mean, uh, what happened to the Seattle Seahawks? So and that's why it's easy for me to put my channel on the line right here because if there's one team out there that's not going to win, that's going to be that one team outside of the public's favorite, the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills, everyone's picking the Bills. Bills are just not going to win this year. You can make it. They make it back. If they make it to the Super Bowl next year, they can do so. They can make it back. They can make it back. But as you know, the house always wins. And if the Buffalo Bills win the Super Bowl, then uh, that's a lot of payouts. This is the public consensus. You just have to wait for another year, I think, to allow the Buffalo Bills to make a Super Bowl. I think a perfect thing. They can go up against the Dallas Cowboys. It's still 
Mahomes Brady matchup is intriguing. Uh, Eagles Chiefs matchup is very compelling. Andy Reid goes up against his former offensive coordinator, Nick Sirianni, coach of the Eagles. Also was brought up under Andy Reid, was a coach under the Kansas City Chiefs organization. Will this be like the Curry brothers when you had the Trailblazers and the Warriors in the conference finals? They want to put these brothers, Jason and Travis Kelsey, in the Super Bowl for the right to whoever wins the second Super Bowl win. That's a way, that's what make that pretty interesting, too. I tell you, when it comes down to four teams, that's when it's going to get really heated. Get to see if it's going to be Tom Brady, if it's going to be the, the Eagles, if it's going to be the Bills, or if it's going to be the Chiefs. Uh, definitely, if it's these four teams, it's going to be a great week. And no, that does not mean the NFL really needs the 49ers. They don't need the 49ers to make it interesting because you already have the drama you have out there. It's going to be good. It's going it's to be good because y'all know if Andy Reid beats all of his prodigies, you beat McDermott, you beat Peterson, and you beat Sirianni, that really shows that they may revolve this around Andy Reid. So if he actually does go through three of his former coaching disciples, that will add Th that certain element to the storyline of Andy Reid being a great coach winning the Super Bowl. And, you know, if he does win his 22nd playoff win and he goes to March 22, then that proves it right there. But to me, what's the killer is the two opposing brothers. And that's what I like a lot about that Super Bowl matchup. So I have to go see if that is. If it's Tom Brady going 8 and 3 in the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, Tom Brady makes it, then you know, it has to be Buffalo. So, you know, I, I'll have to say, so it's going to be interesting to see which game is going to be scheduled first. Is it going to be uh, the Bills, uh, Ch the Bills Chiefs, or is it going to be uh, the NFC Championship game between the Buccaneers and the Eagles? Because I think those two matchups are going to make it uh, very interesting. And the already, NFL already knows who they want. And we'll, we'll surely, it will, one of those matchups will be a sigh-up, that's for sure. One of them will be a sigh-up. But that's how they're going to draw it up. They're going to make the possibilities very interesting, uh, regardless of the matchup. Uh, should make it good. Should make it for a good conference week. And, uh, again, 5-1 this week after the Giants win, after... Everyone knows Buffalo win after a Tom Brady wins, and a 5 1 week uh, can't go wrong with that. And uh, you move on to the division round of the playoffs where there are people who think Cincinnati's still going to have bets, and that's the moment where, hey, they announce the site of the Neutral game, and next thing, what do you think we have? We have an anomaly, we have a neutral side game, and we find out a winner through 60 minutes. Uh, and we get to see who is the better team between Buffalo and Cincinnati. Uh, that will take it for the cake. That will set up the stage for a conference title week.